Hello and welcome to Alvin Home and to this edition, the January update 2020 uh, on the build of my Engage model layout, Elven Home. Uh, this concentrates principally on the church school, uh, but also on the start of the work to build and put in the scrapyard and also looking at a piece of scenic work that I'd also like to quite to do to enable me to actually move the layout along rather more than just scrap, uh, scratch building. So many comments came in for, on the last video about the church school, for which I'm really very, very grateful. Uh, and I comment a bit more about that in a second section that I've recorded especially to respond to those comments and to show how the build of the church school has developed and changed slightly. Um, the next section that you're going to see was recorded at the same time as the piece that was in last, the last video. So although it may answer some of the comments that I got, it doesn't take account of them. Uh, but the piece at the end does. So uh, let's get on with the video and go back a couple of weeks to when I was showing the next stage in the development of the model, uh, moving it forward from just a set of plans on paper. One of the things that I always do is that before I embark upon the actual build, I make a mock-up. Uh, now sometimes I make the mock-up out of the material I'm actually going to be using. If I think there's a high probability that that may be good enough to actually turn into the real building. With this I really wasn't sure how all the bits that I was going to be cutting out would fit together. Uh, in fact this took me almost no time at all. Uh, there's very few pieces to be cut out here but you can get a better idea I think now of the design. So here we have the chapel which will have its door and tall windows there. Uh, here we will have the entrances for the girls, entrance for the boys, with the big windows coming along here. Uh, the windows might continue along this side, but on the other hand they might not because down that end, there's it, it, internally, there will be a ceiling put across the heads room and the staff room to stop them being huge great things. And that will be a storage area, uh, so I don't think it would need necessarily light access there. And then the chimney breasts will be coming on the wall about here, 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 and one coming up through the middle here. Building this has been really useful uh, because, as you may be able to see, I've, all the parts are cut out individually. So that wall, that wall, and that wall are separate pieces, which largely are attached together, if I can show you. You can see these L-shaped pieces of card which is really the main thing that's holding everything together. Um, it's really just to make it uh, quick for the building uh, of the thing. This isn't intended and wasn't intended to be the final version, but very much one just to help me begin to understand some things about construction. So for example, initially I only had a piece here and here, and I realized that was much too flimsy. So I put a piece in here and that strengthened it uh, that led me on to thinking a bit actually about the way in which I cut out the end wall. If I come to this other end here, instead of cutting three separate pieces, what I'm going to do is to cut that as all one piece, um, which will make it much stronger. And I'm going to be using thicker card anyway, but I will cut out two pieces like this. And the second piece will form this end and then provide more strength for the corridor and for this building. Uh, and then at this end I will cut out a piece of card that is the right shape for those two things together. Uh, that should, I think, give it a much stronger thing, much stronger building uh, altogether. I've managed to source the various windows and bits and pieces that I want to try to use on the uh, model. And then I'll talk about what I've learnt from uh, one other thing that I learnt by building my mock-up because it's linked to the windows and things that I'm going to be using. If I bring these in, I put them on black so they're easier to see. These are all from YorkModelRail.com. Um, I use them a lot. They were the people that I got the coins from that I used for the edging of corners of buildings. Uh, these windows here, that's the big windows that are going to sit uh, along if I show along this part of the building. These win this window will be along the front, three of them along the front here, and one for the head study. 
and this window gives access to the side of the head study and the staff room. This is the big window that's at the far end of the um, chapel. Uh, this one, there'll be three of these running along the side of the chapel. No, there won't. That's the big window that's be, that'll be at this end of the chapel. There'll be three of these running along the side of the chapel. Uh, that's the door. The, and then I'm going to make my mind up which of these two I use. I may use this one, I think, given the size of the door. These are lancet windows to sit either side of the door to give light in. And I may use a couple of them if I just take you up to the, to the mock-up again. At the moment, I have no light access on this side of the um, building. And I think there would be some. Uh, I've got six of these, so I think I could easily put four lamps in there just to provide uh, some light access on that side of the building. I do intend to light the building, uh, which should be an easy thing to do. This is not going to be anywhere near as complicated as I made it for myself <laughs> with the hotel. And I may not need to use the just plug system uh, for this. I don't think I will. I've got other lights that I can I can put in that will just uh, provide a constant light that I don't need to necessarily to be able to dim them or change the lights individually. Uh, and I will get either from Langley or if I can find an online source, some paper to use as stained glass for the chapel. Um, Again, you won't be able to see into these buildings, so it is. I don't need to worry too much about internal detailing. So I'm hoping that this layout, this uh, build, will be more straightforward than the last. The only thing that might make it a bit more complicated is the brass. If I bring these up, these are from PD Models. Let's see if I can... What you can see is they are upright brick courses of various types and length and size. That's got um, slanted edges. Uh, this one doesn't. This is just straight brick courses. Um, one of the things I find, I mean, obviously in N-Gage, it's really hard for people to make things in N-Gage like arches, uh, particularly for windows uh, and brick courses that you would normally see around windows. Um, you can get them in paper, but it's much harder. At O-Gage and double O-Gage, um, they're readily available. Uh, and I've just seen these on PD models, and I'll see if I can work them into using the Metcalf brick papers. I think I'm going to be using their normal house brick rather than the bigger bricks that I've used on the um, viaduct, for example. So if I can work these in, I think they will add a nice touch of giving uh, a proper course sitting under the windows, for example. Building the mock-up has also taught, told me uh, that in, in the design, this wall here is too short because when I put the window in, the base of the window sits right by the window at the top of this roof. So I need to add five millimeters to the length of, the, of this wall and that will give me enough room to put the windows in and everything look fine and there to be clearance from the window uh, down to the sloping roof. Uh, but again, that's the value of doing the mock-up. Uh, one thought that has gone through my mind, and I don't know whether I'm going, going to do it, um, is that has one big window in the front there. It's possible I might change that to that being two side by side, or even two of these side by side. That's why I confused myself earlier. Um, and what I can probably do, uh, well, what I, can, what I can do is, is maybe cut out um, two templates to have a look about which I prefer. Uh, these are going to be fitted in flush with the card. They're not sitting behind because they're the same depth as the card. Uh, these windows will sit behind uh, so that I'll have somewhere to put the um, uh, lintels and that kind of thing uh, in place. So that pretty much covers uh, the building of the uh, church school. Uh, what I will do before the end of the uh, video is show you the mock-up sitting in the place where it's going to be on the layout. So I'll speak to you again in just a moment.
Right, well you can see the stable block uh, where I expect it actually to go. Um, I have a white metal kit of a horse and dray uh, which I'll be using. Um, the scrapyard is very loosely based around the idea of Steptoe and Son for those of you with long enough memories uh, in the UK. Uh, Steptoe and Son lived within the scrapyard as well. I'm, I'm not intending to put a dwelling in this yard. What I am intending, if I just move myself slightly so you can see a bit better, is that the main the road obviously descends out through this arch and then will disappear into a tunnel uh, just slightly off camera. And I intend to have a fence. Uh, scale model scenery seem to do a really good broken um, picket fence. Uh, not picket fence, uh, wooden fence, uh, which looks to be just the right sort of thing. Um, so that would be a wooden fence with some gates uh, at some point, obviously to let them in, which will just sort of close off this area because this is largely dead ground, which the scrapyard took over many years ago. And the scrap and all the other stuff will extend through here and up into the triangle area uh, above. I've managed to acquire at Worley uh, a PD Marsh kit. Actually, I had, I had to order it there and they sent it on to me which they do, which contains, um, in addition to a, a lorry, which I, I will make up, though perhaps not use in the scrapyard because I want that to be horse-drawn. But if I bring in front of the camera, you'll see this is a bag of scrap materials. Um, so I've got the start of the scrap materials uh, here. And then obviously um, such other bits of rubbish and things. I, I bought some uh, old barrels, uh, some tires, um, some old pallets, those were scale model scenery, so I'll be making all of those up just to start filling in the area along here. Uh, it'll take some scrap in there, but um, I'll decide once I, once I get the area completed. And that will then um, help me with the road configuration, because as this road comes down here, uh, I'm not sure whether it is going to join another road there or a road will come off as a T-junction which will go under this arch and run away uh, under the bridges and off the layout. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing the scrapyard uh, and that's the main piece of scenic work I think that I'm going to do here for the next few weeks whilst I'm finishing working out how I'm going to build the frame on which High Elven will go. The other area that I might want to actually start working on uh, because I really want to see some progress on the layout proper uh, rather than just doing buildings uh, is to have a go at putting in the incline uh, that will take us up to the coal stage. Um, that really is going to be nothing more than a, a sort of grassy hill uh, taking it up and I would quite like to get that bit done because then I can start filling in the scenic work at the back uh, of the layout. So that's, uh, that's the end of this section, and uh, we'll go on to the next one. As I mentioned in the uh, introduction, I had so many comments that came back in relation to the uh, church school and its design. Uh, and although initially I was happy to stick with the thoughts of thoughts I had in my head, uh, the sheer weight of the comments really started making me thinking about whether the design did need to change. Uh, and I just want to say thank you particularly to um, Mike B, Nicholas Gomez, J Van AMB, David Auger, Paul Sheedy, Stuart Sampson, Les Griffiths, Rich Baden, Jonathan Hobbs, Andrew Retelick, and Stephen Riley, all of whom gave me particular comments. Uh, there seemed to be a lot of concern either that I was being too generous in placing the uh, school toilets in the, um, inside the building, or that I hadn't given them windows, uh, a question whether and where the vestry would be for the chapel, given that it's being used on Sundays um, for uh, services, and also a general question about whether, uh, given the height of the building, the internal rooms, the classrooms, would be just too big uh, internally. And that has sent me back cudgeling my brain uh, and I've come up with a number of changes to the design uh, before I show you, as I promised in the last section earlier in this video, uh, the mock-up uh, on the layout. And I'll explain when it goes on the layout 
why the lavatories are definitely inside the building. Um, so the changes that I've made essentially is to put a second floor, or a second floor, a, the first floor goes in. So there's a ground floor and upper floor. Uh, so the windows that you can now see here are windows that enter into the corridor outside some classrooms that are up on that uh, level. Um, that's made a big change to the rear of the building. Here's the rear of the building, uh, which previously only had essentially sets of windows set high up. Uh, this now, these are the bottom two classrooms. Those are the top two classrooms. That is the staff room. That is a window that gives light onto a stairway, which ascends up through there. Uh, that gives light onto the corridor at the top of the stairway. So that's had a major change. Uh, it's marginally changed where the fireplaces will be. You can see these at the top here. That's the fireplaces now sit up this wall here. Uh, and the fireplaces for the head study, which is that one, and the staff room sit in this wall. So the chimney breast would come out about here somewhere. Uh, the other change that I've made, uh, thinking a little bit more about the, the layout, the design outside the school, is that the boys' entrance has moved. Instead of being uh, at the front here, it's moved round to the side. And I'll explain more in just a moment, once I get back onto the layout, why that change has been made. So as you see on the front elevation, there's a door here in what is still a plain wall, and that's the boys' entrance. The cloakrooms will still be along this wall here, with windows showing into this corridor to give light. Um, or cloakrooms, they're coat pegs really, more than anything else. Uh, one thing to note about, this building was built in the 1840s, 1850s. It predates the Education Act of 1863, or the Rab Butler reforms of, I think, 1947. And if truth be told, the school is probably getting to be a little bit too small for the numbers that it now needs to manage. Uh, so it doesn't actually have all the facilities that it necessarily needs. Um, that is my modeler's way of saying they'll have to put up with the hat pegs that are there because they're not getting another cloakroom. Uh, so you can see that there has been, um, that that's the ground floor, the upper floor, has a room here where I'd always mentioned, I mentioned in the previous clip in this video, that a, that a mezzanine floor would be in as a storeroom tanks. Well, now that I've put a full floor in, the storeroom and water tanks are here. The head has his study there, or her study, and two classrooms are there, which are smaller than the ones below. Um, I, I don't know why they're smaller, they just are. Uh, and that's, uh, well, partly because, of course, the corridor that sits down here on the lower floor is only an entrance corridor and I didn't want to make the width of the overall width of the building wider because I like the proportions and the overall look especially having done the mock-up. So um, any other change that I've made? Oh yes the vestry has gone in here uh, which is accessed from within the building so, so there's not a separate entry door for that though there is a door between the vestry and the chapel and as a consequence, a window has gone in into the, to give light into the vestry. So I think that's all the changes. Um, I'll just go back up onto the layout now to show you where it is on the layout, and that will then bring the video to an end. Here you can see the school on the layout uh, in the position that it's going to be. And in part, the proportions of the school are to allow it to fit into this space. Uh, it will be able to go back a little bit further than I, a little bit back towards the fence. The fence line you can see here is going to be continued along and will provide the separation for the railway. And I've checked the clearance that I need, particularly for any train coming off into the branch. The mainline trains are not really a problem. Uh, that wasn't fixed in, so it's just fallen over from the vibration. It is going to be fixed in. Uh, and that will give us plenty of room. I, some of the comments were talking about that where there were separate education and separate entrances, the playgrounds were also separated. So what I'm now intending is that the girls' playground will be in front of the chapel, but the boys' playground is going to be here. Uh, the road will come up here somewhere into a, a large area, partly to allow anything to turn. This I will grass over as a kind of open grassed area. 
and there will be a playground here for the boys which is bounded by the fence there and a gate there'll be a gate across here which will come into the girls playground which will be in front of the chapel uh, the back area here I'm probably going to put to lawn or something like that um, I may even I don't know maybe I'll, I'll put it to an allotment so that the, the school children are taught basic uh, agricultural skills uh, why they need them in a town I don't know but it might look pretty so that's pretty much uh, how things are going to look the overall proportions of the um, of the building there is a change which I think I mentioned in the previous clip this is going to come up by five millimeters to give room for the windows to go in but it doesn't I think greatly affect uh, and indeed doing that gives even more space to be able to put a second floor in so that's it that's it for this video uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope you've seen that you know the comments are just so useful to me uh, they really do make me think <coughs> and this will be a, a much better design and a much better looking building now thank you for all your comments so if you've got any more comments uh, feel free to give them the only thing I will say is I'm now uh, well advanced in cutting out every bit to, to build the building uh, so uh, I think the design for this is now pretty settled uh, but if you've got any ideas for what might be at the back of the building between that uh, in this area here other than lawn then let me know uh, because that's all still up for grabs so it just remains for me to say uh, if you I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please do give it a thumbs up that's all very helpful uh, if you uh, haven't subscribed please do subscribe and as I said if you've got any comments please do let me have them but until I speak to you again in about a fortnight's time, that's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye.